There's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'll say his motherfucking name. Tim Zhu in the house <laughs> right here. And, of course, June 17th, Showtime, Australia. We're talking about Carlos Ocampo to defend the interim WBO title at 154. But, Tim, not Jermel Charlo. So what's your pulse on this? What are we doing here? <clears throat> in my, in, in all honesty, I'm just staying active, um, not letting my career just uh, – blow past me and 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 watch it on the sideline it's be it'll, it will be over a year 13 months since we've seen Jermel Charlo uh win back all four titles in this division against Brian Castaño injuries have held him up um you've wanted to be active that's why there's an interim title we saw you against Tony Harrison and it was spectacular I think the fear is that we won't ever align. We won't ever cross paths. I mean, is it still inevitable in your mind? Get healthy, Jermel. We'll make this happen. Yeah, well, you can only hope for, you know. Um, 13 months is a long time to, to stay out of the ring, especially if in the peak of your career. You should be maximizing every opportunity. You know, it's not going to last forever. So I think on his terms, I think it's probably not ideal to, to be staying in the sideline. Uh, for me, I just keep plodding along, keep doing what I do. And yeah, it's, it's going to be inevitable anyway. I mean, is this going to end up playing into your hands? The added experience you'll be getting from uh, the Tony Harrison win, which you can argue is the strongest of your career through another strong contender here on June 17th and Carlos Ocampo. Will you be better off of this delay in the wrong one, long run in your eyes? Yeah, for sure. I think it's it's playing in his part that uh, I am getting better. I am getting more comfortable and uh, the stars are aligning towards my favor. And uh, when we do meet, which we will meet sometime, uh, it's, it's going to be ended in a bad way for him. All right. Well, you know, this Tony Harrison fight to get to this point, which we thought that was initially obviously going to be Jermel Charlo. Tony Harrison, who was the only man to beat Jermel, filled in admirably but it was a Tim Zoo night all again, and it was a brutal night that felt like a message was sent. Is that true? And if so, what was that message in your eyes? Yeah, well, I think in in the Super Walter division, I think uh, Tony Harrison's got the probably the most superior boxing skills. He's, uh, his IQ's up there at the, at the very, very top, and uh, he comes from a, a bloodline of, of boxers. So I knew... To be able to to send that message, even though I had the Jamel uh, Charlo, I had the the shot at the fight, I could have waited. I wanted to send uh, that message that you know what, I fear no one. I will take on anyone, uh, even if I got opportunities. I'll risk it all. Uh, that's the that's the message that I wanted to send out, and I think the message was was loud and clear. Well, when you punctuate that message with say my name with, with some profanity, with some exclamation point, with some authority. I think for those who look, you know, we don't know Tim Zhu. We know the little glimpses, especially here in the States, we get of interviews with you or when we see you on Showtime sports, but that felt like, Oh, you know, this guy's not just a dog as a fighter, but, but he's, I don't know, trying to wipe the chips off his shoulders, something. What was that all about from your perspective? Yeah, well, I've sort of heard it my whole life, even from the the start of my career, from the first fight onwards. Uh, you're not, you're not, you're not daddy, you know. Basically, everyone's saying so. It was a clear message for me to send out that you know I am my own man, and don't judge me by my last name, but judge me by my first name. And uh, I am my own character, and I've created my own path to be here. I certainly, uh, I certainly felt that watching on the broadcast. What was your dad's response to that? Yeah, Dad was quite happy. <laughs> he was quite happy with the performance. Uh, he's always a critic anyway, so he's, he he was saying uh, a few things. But yeah, it's all it's all good. Well, I think that the tenor of that fight on March 12th seemed to change in the third round when you staggered Harrison, and it was like, oh, I felt that power. I felt like he was more defensive after that point until you stopped him there in, in round nine. Did you feel any kind of sense that his that your power early on was starting to discipline him? Yeah, it sort of shocked him. Um, he knew that he wasn't in with a... It wasn't an easy fight, but what he expected, he thought he was going to just completely outschool me. And, that, and 
I knew I was uh, levels above what he was thinking that I was. So, um, yeah, the power definitely did show. And again, Mike Tyson's got a famous saying, uh, everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. And and, and that, that was the perfect uh, response to that. Well, what I sort of like about the the choice you're making, that you want you want to be the champion. So yeah, I, I'm I'm waiting on Jermel, but you're not going to let that sideline your own career, which is why you took the Tony Harrison fight. It's why you're coming mm-hmm. back uh, June 17th in the states here from Australia against Carlos Ocampo. But when you knocked down Harrison in round nine, it showed what the explosion of the crowd can do. I mean, there were like fire shooting up from from the arena <laughs> back there. I mean, you know, pyrotechnics. <laughs> But this was an event. You are building your own star in that regard. Um, that atmosphere did seem extra special, though. Did it? Did it surprise you at all to to walk into that arena and feel that? Yeah, it was pretty pretty crazy, you know, to be able to to walk out to a, a crowd like that with everyone's roaring, everyone's going crazy. Uh, it's pretty. Yeah, it's. I guess uh, I could say it's a uh, it's an honor for me. And even the next one, like. Uh, the Gold Coast fight right now that's happening sold out in less than a month before the fight's happening. You know, it's, the the results are speaking for themselves and I'm blessed to be able to have this opportunity to for, for the whole nation to just, uh, just grab me on board. And yeah, the support's amazing. I ask you this because I'm curious from a distance is, Australia, from a combat sports sense, a, a mixed martial arts country or, or, or boxing on, a, on an even playing field from the passion of the fans across the board? I think, I think a bit of both. I think, I think the, the MMA scene's big as well with uh, Alex Volkanovsky leading the pack, number one pound-for-pound pound fighter in the, in the UFC. Um, yeah, but I think, I think there's plenty of boxers here as well. And then... The, really do get behind it no no doubt no doubt about it uh i hear carlos ocampo is going to fight tim zoo i'm i'm expecting fireworks i'm expecting offense uh we know his toughness you you tend to turn into the destroyer it's like flicking that fl- that light switch right <laughs> you turn into it early against terrell gaucher you managed it better but got harrison out of there uh do you welcome when you're signing off and you know that guy across from you is going to bring it on the level that Ocampo likes to where, Hey man, we could be, we could both be destroyers right off the start. If we do. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's a, a fan friendly fight. You got two completely different. Uh, you got two similar styles going at it. It's like pit bull versus pit bull. So we'll see which pit bull for, uh, falls first. And, and I know it's not it going to be me. Well, Pitbull was an interesting reference point right there, Tim Zhu, because this fight almost uh, seemed to be hanging in the balance uh, when you were bit by a dog of some kind. I got to hear this story here. I'm happy you're okay. I'm happy the show <laughs> must go on. But we're talking about, like, what, stitches? In, you know, serious injury here. What went down? Yeah, well, just just got attacked by, uh, by an American staffie. Uh, just sort of took a bite at uh, I was rushed to the hospital. They, they performed surgery straight away. I've got 25 stitches, but it's all good now. Um, I sort of just brushed it off, continued on, and whatever it is, what it is, you know, you just got to go through it. What was the setup? Was it like a family dog situation, a stray dog? Like this, this is tough to no, hear. No, it was a, yeah, it was a, it was a, a mate's dog. Um, just happened out of nowhere. Just yeah, he went, he went. I went, I tried to pat it, and he just yeah attacked me. Are you an animal guy in, in, in your personal life? Like, was that a, a so, somewhat, like, crazy, shocking moment? Like, yo, what's going on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love dogs, man, and I couldn't believe that happened. Now I'm sort of staying away from, from any type of animal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, in terms of movement, healing, all that, it's, it, it's as if nothing happened, I'm assuming? Everything's good, man. Everything's good. There it is. All right. <laughs> uh, let's talk timeline. You don't wait for anybody, but if you get past Carlos Ocampo on June 17th, if you're going to still have to defend this interim title, you will. How quickly do you want to turn around? At this point, is it Charlo or Bust? Where do you stand? Well, I'm thinking that it's going to be Charlo. Hopefully sometime October. Hopefully yeah. sometime October we can we can get it on and just give the the – the fans, the, the, the super welterweight division needs. 
Do you see yourself staying at 154 for an extended period? How is that weight cut going for you? Um, I feel like I've got a couple fights left in me at 154, but my eventual future later on will, will definitely be at, at 160 and even at 168. Tim, uh, when I when we talk about that crowd that 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 embraced you and 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 backed you, and I'm sure they're going to come out again here as we uh, as we take this fight to uh, Broad Beach. Is that how we're saying it here, Tim? Yeah, seems, yeah. Broad seems Beach. like a nice <laughs> coastal resort town there. Um, <laughs> how is that that walking the walking the walk and being that star? You've never been able to avoid attention due to your last name. Obviously, you're carving your own path though. But do you do you get down with that? Do you like having a famous face, a famous name like that? I think uh, the happiness it brings people that you see on the on a daily daily type of routine. Um, that's all that matters, you know. If you can make some person smile and and make their day, so be it. That's the that's the least I could do, you know. And I, I feel the the support is is unbelievable for me. So uh, I just take it all in. Yeah, it's got to be wild. I mean, are there moments where you're just sort of like, hey, folks, not now, okay? I I mean, you know, just not now. There, okay? <laughs> I, I sometimes, man, but you know what? It, again, I, I, I can never refuse a, a photo or, or an autograph. I, I just feel like it's the, it's, it'd be wrong by me. All right, Tim, when you're at this point where you've established your name, you've, you've established that you're uh, going to be a problem for anybody here at 154 and that you've got these big plans, what does motivate you? If there's a, if there's one thing that stands out above, and it, you know, it could be like the money, it could be the the validation, it could be a million things. But what is ultimately that thing that pulls you to do this, to 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 put in the time, to to take on the risk and walk this path? To be number one, quite simple, number one, and that's that's Charlo. And even if let's say Charlo relinquishes his belts and does that, I still want to be that top dog of the the, the division. And to be the top dog of the division, you got to beat the man, and that's it. That's that's all I want in this in this weight division right now is is Charlo. Do you have goals beyond the undisputed championship? Yeah, I'll, I, I would, I'd love to fight at middleweight one day, um, even super middleweight. So that's good. that's definitely in my in my path in the future. What type of athlete were you as a kid uh, in terms of team sports, Tim? Uh, I was always a hogger <laughs> in the basketball, in the soccer. <laughs> Does that mean that you were the... physical and aggressive? In, in, uh... No, I was, I was always trying to be the one that who, who wins, you know. Uh, my competitive nature is, is crazy. Whatever I do, I have to win no matter what. And... In basketball and soccer, I was I was always being that individual athlete that that takes it to that that next level. What was the moment that you realized you could fight? Um, when I was sparring people on, on a national level in Australia, um, and sort of smashing them without even trying. Got to be a great feeling there, Tim. Got to be, got to be. There <laughs> it is. Uh, we can't wait to see you back here on Showtime Boxing in the States, but it goes down in your home country Saturday, June 17th. Well, I think that's like June 18th, your time. I don't know. There's like a time <laughs> thing there. It always screws me up. Carlos Acampo in front of you. Can't wait to see, Tim. Uh, let's close with this. Uh, what should fans expect when they tune in on the night? Just uh, a barn burn in the pocket, two people's going at it. Yeah, that's enough. That's enough to sell the tickets. They're sold. Thank you very much, Tim Zhu. We'll see you. Appreciate the time. Thank you, man.